good day to you all. And uh, let me apologize for the delay in my start. And I must have to tell you this morning, I'm coming to this very short um, exercise where the college, the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sport, continues to bask in its achievements. And today it's not much different from what has been happening over the years where the time has been taken out to really show how much we really do appreciate and how much we are really overjoyed by the fact that we have a number of student athletes representing the country a few weeks from now. And at this moment we are now at the time where we have a reception for athletes who will attend in the World University Games. CAC Games and the IAF World Championships. And these are all students of the GC Foster College of Physical Education and Sports. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you that you put your hands together as we, at this moment, show appreciation for these persons. <laughs> and I invite us to stand as we
we regained the male intercolor championship. We just about miss out on the female championship. And I think we need to put this in context. The head coach will tell you that last year we lost a lot of our over the past couple of years, quite a number uh, of our female athletes, many of whom have gone overseas. So it was really an outstanding achievement. And uh, our head coach need to be commended. I think he did with us um, many respect, create miracles such as what he created at home. Um, because we weren't expected to win this year and some persons were extremely disappointed. Um, among them, Dr. Taylor's associates. Um, the, so our track team has really been quite outstanding. I was very pleased to be with them at the Penry Lakes where we had an outstanding performance. Um, our female team and male team, both of them did extremely well. We came back with three trophies and I think that our performance was one of the best performance in many years. So, in fact, the persons who have been selected to represent our country at the World University Games, at the Senior World uh, Championship, and at the Caribbean and Central American Championship have continued the vein that we have done throughout the year, really. So we are seeing the result of the hard work that has um, gone on over the past 12 months or so. Of course, we are an institution that our major focus is really the education, that is the training of physical education teachers and coaches and other sporting professionals. But as part of that, we also develop athletes, athletes who can represent our country. So for us, the whole idea of involvement in sport is not a marketing tool for us. It really is not a marketing tool. We don't use it a tool to tell the world that we are the home of whatever sport. Our focus is really about sports and recreation. So, sport and recreation is our purpose. Our purpose, our only purpose. Yes. So, I am extremely pleased to see all these young people that will be going off to represent our country. I must say that in the, the World University Championship, we will be sending a defending champion and we'll also be sending a medalist from the last championship. And Raymond Brown will be joining them. Now I want to say something um, about that. Raymond and Orion Powell. At the beginning of the, the academic year, the head coach was and the director of sport. We agreed that we need to invest in the field events and we need to look at the other non-traditional areas. And in so doing, we engage, we do two things. First, we invested in some equipment that we did not have so that we can have, we can participate in field events. And then the next thing, we invested in a new coach in that era. Um, is it not here? It's the Gale up here. Right. Um, and we, so we, we invested and engaged the services, Mr. Gale, of um, a school in Clarendon. Okay. And uh, 
he has done a tremendous job. He has, in the first year, he produced a national champion in javelin, in orange oil. And with Raymond, he, we are seeing where Raymond has improved to the extent where he has met the B standard for um, the, is it Idol B standard? For the World Champion. And has been the most outstanding Jamaican um, in the shot for this year. So, what has happened? While we have been known for the sprints and the 400 meters and so on over the years, and um, we have the, the sprint expert in Maurice Wilson, we have also started now to. Um, achieve excellence in other areas and it is our intention that we will continue along that way over the coming years so that um, in time we will see uh, Jamaican medals being won in other areas beside the, the sprint and the 400 meters where we, we seem to do extremely well. Now to you athletes that when you leave you know and you go abroad, you are representing not only Jamaica, but you are representing GC Fossil. Right. I would like you to understand and for you to recognize that the, the training and the development that you have gone through at this college is valuable and I, I really would like to see people recognize this and my concern is that when we look at the number of persons some of them who are now um, considered um, elite athletes many of them started right here it was gc foster that um, in the beginning that developed the transition from high school to becoming a senior athlete and sometimes we find that when they get to that stage, they forget where they're coming from. They forget that it was at high school that they started, that, that coach we discovered them at high school. Right? You say he couldn't be where he is without his high school coach. And then they forget as well the intermediate intervention here at college, working with the coaches here. So that when they leave and they go to, to Mr. Mills' finishing school, as I would call it, because essentially that is what it is. It's a finishing school. By the time we get those, the athletes, people like Maurice Wilson and the other coaches in the colleges at UTEC and elsewhere. I've already moved this person to the extent where he can finish them and make them into world champions. My concern is that the athletes themselves need to let the world know that that is where it comes. The newspapers aren't interested in that. They're just interested in what is happening now. <coughs> and the, the, the authorities unfortunately does not seem to show enough interest in that because it is my view that public expenditure on sport ought to be directed at this intermediate level once you become an elite athlete and you have you have contracts and you're with a big club and so on at that stage they can take care of themselves but we have challenges at this level. When one of the upcoming athletes has an injury that will cost a couple hundred thousand to treat, and the coach has to run around and the school help and the beg and the beseech and a, a kind doctor help, that really is what happened to produce people at this level. So, 
we need to see the public, where we have public resources, be directed in that middle level. And the recognition as well that the colleges is where a lot of this take place, where we develop the persons to the extent where they can become world champions and can then go to the, the finishing school. So, I would ask you, since, since we don't have the public authorities here, and we don't have the media here, I will ask you, the athletes, that you need to tell that story yourselves. Whenever they interview you, tell that story that where you're coming from. Yeah? After you thank God for winning, the next thing you should do is to tell the story of how the story of your help from high school and from your college intermediate. Since others will not tell it, you ought to do that. And therefore, I expect when I see Rashi pass the finishing line and then do him and after I thank God for and his father and mother and so on, also thank you for your school for the input. Okay? I wish all of you well competition. I expect you to compete fully, to do so with dignity. Remember, winning is good, but it's not everything. It would be nice if I see, even if you don't win, that all of you um, do your personal best. Because I said, we recognize that as important. The media not going to tell us, they go well in PE, but it didn't win. Okay? That is important so that when you go personal things, it's important. Good? Look forward to hear good things from Russia, from Mexico. Mexico. And well, one is Moscow and one is Kazan, right? In Russia. Right. So two Stories from Russia and one from Mexico. I wish you all good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, the person who was in charge of the athletic event in the college, Mr. Ben Brown. Has a portfolio as the athletic director. He will now come to us, and his responsibility is to give us an overview of the event. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Benfield.
and we formed one called Lansford Springs. 2003, Lansford Springs made the World Championship team as a student. That broke ground for a number of things for us as an institution. We were recognized by a number of local and international entities. And I think, in all fairness, that's the milestone, with, along with Mr. Wilson's persistence, helped us to get that assistance from Adidas for the program. Fast track a number of years and identify some of the challenges we have, we have had. It is clear to point out that one thing that we face is the level of consistency from the athletes. Consistency and their level of patience. Why I say this? A number of athletes that have left us along the way. They have made some headways in the first year and another major advance in the second year. And from there on, they, left, they have left the program. I had scholarships, they have moved around to other local clubs. And it, it highlights the fact that if athletes are patient, they work hard, they believe in themselves, they believe in the program, they believe in the coach, things can work in their favor. From 2001, I've been associated with the program. And I, I must say that the very first two athletes, three athletes, that have stood their ground and have stayed around for a long haul. Rashid Dwyer, Anastasia Leroy, Raymond Brown. All three athletes that I've mentioned have been here for over three years. They have met some form of demise in terms of training, injuries whatsoever. But again, they have managed to stay with us over the years. And I just need to highlight that point specifically. Because today we are here to celebrate your achievements at the National Fair and your pending departure to a number of international games, which I know you will do very well. We have always identified that you are very strong in the air at 400 meters the sprint. And most recently we have started to make some advances in the field events here, which has proven to be very successful. Coach Gale is not here today because he's away on national duties and the coaches for a world youth team. And I can say this publicly, his association with GC Foster College has really put him in the light for other persons to really look at his work. And I know that other persons might have some Yeah, they don't feel that like we can go there and run some superb time, we can replace anything. 
So they tend to highlight the bigger name athletes. Same athletes coming out of the same system as us. And they highlight them. But what is good, when you go there and you compete, you, you make it evident that you're not there as a fill you're there to make a team. That is a significant part. Or in Paul, I honestly believe that the sky is the limit for him. Um, winning the national championship this year, and just to point out that last year the national champion in Javin is also a GC Foster College student, Jeffrey King. So he's just beating another GC Foster student this year. There is tremendous opportunities for us in the field events. I think what what this year needs is a little bit more input from all parties, and I think it will, it will definitely be improved. Um, we expect that Orin will really make a name for himself this year coming out of the trial as a national champion and really dominating the CSEs. Anastasia Leroy, what, what can I say about Anna? Um, Anna has cried, Anna has decided to quit, Anna has a real guest. And has changed her hairstyle to look this way. <laughs> but nevertheless, Anna, from, from early as last year, September, I realized Anna changed her name from Anastasia to the strong one. And I've been watching that, watching that, that um, profile of Anna from September. Each time you see Anna make a presentation or something, I don't be there any time that it's the strong one. And I think that has, that, that the focus, or she has changed her focus. Uh, she changed her focus for this past year. And if Anna didn't get that injury a couple of weeks ago, she would have been in the top two at the trials. And I hope you all as athletes really had the chance to read the stories from Anna about not being. And not being three days after the London Olympics, she did um, breast cancer surgery. And she has competed right through. Nobody knew that she, she was running with breast cancer. And she just came out this morning and really highlighted that. Came to the child, she wants you to have very good time, but she's still on cancer treatment. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I honestly expect Anna to win at the World University Games. I really stop for a club because we have three athletes going this year. Uh, we have an institution that has more athletes than us. It's uh, Louis. But we are there to compete, and la, the la, we sent two GC Foster College students at the last game, and they came up with medals, and we don't expect anything less this year. We see Grey. All I'm saying, she went away for a short period of time. She went on a vacation to UTEC for a year. <laughs> the vacation wasn't so smooth, and she decided to come back to us. And within the first couple of months, we started to see improvement. And she's going away on the team as well. So a lot to her credit and the program. Chris and Gordon, although not fully on board as a student and in September, they are part of us. And I, I, I want to highlight that you have come on board and, and, and really been committed to the program. And I. I am sure that if you continue the work on the guidelines of the court, you will definitely be one to continue in the near future. All the athletes that have made the teams, national champion Shantira runs in 1500 meters. At one point in time, when I saw her running on the track, I said that Shanti looked like she can also participate in the Rendez vous Container Series. So the girl was almost fighting her. Right at the church meet a lot. It was a fist to fist thing. And I said, no, this is not a fist thing. It's a fist, fist to fist race. But nevertheless, and, and we must give credit to the middle of the language and coach as well as the and stuff. What really should be highlighted is that we have another GC Foster College class students who competed at the trial and no more busy races. And it didn't really come out on top. And Mr. Shakes mentioned a while ago about the finish, the finish girl thing. And a number of athletes have left here within a year or two 
and they're here competing locally and they have not made any major improvement. Um, not to call any names, one particular male athlete spent almost a week talking to him, the entire week last week. And he's having some serious problems with that. And I said, I know that if I said to him, come back to GC, I think he'll be at the gate. I, I figure Morris, he was at the gate all of him because he saw that the GC first and gate when it's open. And I know that if I said, come back to the college, I know that he will go to the gate and come in. But what I want to say to you is that there's a thing called patience. A madman said to me one time that patience is a virtue. And I never realized what he was trying to say because I was trying to run in a lane to make him stock street. And the man was like, come on, man, patience is a virtue. Take your time, man. I never knew that there was a robbery going on in Stark Street. And I walked in the robbery. And I never listened to the man, man. What I'm trying to say is that you have to have patience within yourself. Track and field is the only sport that you can train for four years. And you get an injury. And that's it. It's a sport that requires patience. It's a sport that requires fair play. And the word is. Is it such a devious state now as it really relates to drugs? As I think, you have to be very, very careful what you take in your bodies. You will go into foreign countries that, like, for example, Russia, and I can tell you this, persons in Russia, at certain parts in Russia, will be able to walk up to you and, and, and try to hold on to your hand and rub your skin to see if the, if the black can come up. It's the first you see black people, the first. A lot of parts in Russia, they have not seen black people. And you need to be more, all you need to be more cognizant of the fact that when you go out and you compete, you can't just leave your bottle of water and you're like, get your way and just go and run a lap and come back and take it up and do it. Right? And that's where you really need to take, take track of yourself and ensure that. Because your coach will not be around, your manager journey will not be around. So you have to be that person that really. That be, be that social, that, that protect, protective protective for yourself. Um, I've almost forgotten Keegan. Why? Keegan didn't compete a whole lot through the year. Through the year. I, I saw him one day and I thought he was a model for the track team. <laughs> Tall and all his neat and him. But he was plagued with injuries. And for him to come to the trials and run such a wonderful, I think around 46, 46, 46 2. That, that really, within itself, shows that you have a whole lot more to offer. And I hope that people like Keegan and Everton and all the young players, when they go there and talk to the person, and don't be daunted by what they plan to offer you. Because you have to remember that you started a program here and it is, give it, give it some time. If after three years you feel that you want to move on, because between Mr. Wilson and myself, we have already sat down at the end of the year and look at a person that, yeah, you can go on, or this person needs to stay. And this college has helped a number of athletes over the years. Sitting at the trials a, a week, two weeks ago, Fisher, a number of GC Foster College athletes came back to me to sit down at the tent and say, boy, what, what we got from GC is no way in comparison to what we have, we have you know, have been receiving over the years at these international universities. And the athletes, some of the athletes themselves can tell you that when they look at the Pegrades and they see us, the way we look alone, it really highlights that level of, of jealousy. Um, he looked at, I can't even remember his name, Tafa Wee Johnson competing at the show. And you ask yourself, is this the same Tafa Wee that was here a couple months ago? I, I am one person who don't like um, when persons waste my time. And I know when athletes have genuine injuries, and I know when they don't have genuine injuries. I have a number of athletes come and they compete over the years. And within the second part of the semester, they are a political principle known as redshirt because they want to get their full four years when they go away in scholarship. Again, Look at the model that we have inside of the room. And I'm talking to the young persons in the room, like the, the key gun, the Christian, the Everton. Look at all the athletes that we have here, we have inside the room. And the commitment that they have shown over the years, three, four years. And while, although it's not a case that they have won on the trail, but they are all 
and that strategic role of development. And if they stay committed and focused, the sky is the limit. I know that you all will go in a couple of days and come be that, as Mr. Sheikh said, you're not just representing Jamaica, you're representing GC Foster College. The World, the world University Games athletes leave Wednesday, right? Yeah. The CAC leave Wednesday. <coughs> I think the World University Games <coughs> athletes, Anna, Raymond, you have an opportunity to really become acclimatized to Russia much earlier than another person. So going over to the World Championship, you you would have really got a taste what Russia is going to offer. So use it to your advantage. Ensure that you let the flag of the institution fly high, be ambassadors for yourself, to call it to country. Do well, and again, just stay focused, stay committed, and have patience. Thank you to Sir Wilson, the head coach, Sir Shakes. People like Mr. Google who really collected the forms sometimes very late and, and I really stick with us. Um, plan manager, I don't like calling him the physio. Sam, Reverend Bedford, this is Thompson, whenever they need the emergency chance come late. I said no, but you know, there's a soft place coming with, with, with um, conditions. Thanks to even though it's not a media event, we must highlight that person must acknowledge that we have gotten a lot of support over there from Adidas, Team Jamaica people, Sports Development Foundation. All these entities help us to pay to you and help us to be here. We must recognize that over the years. Thank you again. Thanks so much, Mr. Brown. And I'm sure that as you had mentioned, well, you said you didn't like calling names, but I'm sure that you don't want to make a reminder of that. People that, and the person from the kitchen or here, Ms. Pearl, and the teacher, the team, and they are going to do a good job with them, and making sure that people are real, and they will not be deserved. Rashid, who sometimes down here, I see when uh, there was a Rashid, because I was there, I was supposed to be plenty, which I Rashid made up his face, and I said, give me two more now. <laughs> so, you know, all in all, it has been, I mean, a very good and enjoyable moment. Ladies and gentlemen, it would be remiss of me not to make mention of the fact that the athletes could not reach where they are without the coach or the coaches. And as a, as a result of that, Mr. Wilson, who heads the coaching department, will now come to make remarks or to give some remarks in that <laughs> arena. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together and let's go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, I think Mr. Shakes would have covered most of what I wanted to say. And Bentley, Mr. Athletic Director, put the ice on the cake. I see Mr. Shakes looking at his watch, so I guess time is limited. No. I'm going to have to repeat some of what was said. We could not be here this morning without saying a big thank you, and I'm going to start the principal, Mr. Shakes, who has given a lot of great insight in the direction forward. Mr. Thelma Samuels, Reverend Beckford, my very good friend, the doctor over here, who has been giving, giving me insight in track and field for, I would say, six years solidly, Dr. Arthur Taylor. Uh, financial director, athletic director, of course. Uh, Ms. Bell, plant manager, how many times do I have to be calling you? Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, and I'll be calling you in about half an hour from now again. Um, chef, always on the track, floor. Um, Soji, Sean, Mr. Bogle, who probably left out in the back. If you have been left out, a very big thing. I'm at two minutes. I want you to listen to me carefully. 
in 2002, there was a young lady who was a darling of track and field in Jamaica. She was the most popular female in track and field in Jamaica. Even more popular than Merlin at, at the time. Of her. And her name was Anisha in 2002. Then there was Usain Bolt, who just came on the scene 15 years ago. Having won at the CAC Games, he became a favorite to win at the 2002 World Championships. Going forward, what transpired? Anisha McLaughlin last ran 22.94 to Vernisha James from England who ran 22.93. And here came the same point, 20.61, won the 200 meter championship. And his life changed forever. His entire life changed. Anisha McLaughlin was the more popular athlete at the time. And Usain Bolt came, stole the thunder, and from there he developed in what is now known as the most successful athlete, male athlete ever in the history of Olympic and World Championship games. Rewind, going back. In 2005, Tyson Gay was fourth at Helsinki. Wallace Spearman was second. And Usain Bolt was eighth. Fast forward, 2007 in Osaka. Tyson Gay won. Spearman who was second place four, and Usain Bolt who was who was eighth place second. Rewind again. 2002, Sharon Simpson, a no name in track and field, came to the national um, camp and was selected in the sixth to run for Jamaica. Nadine Palmer, the top junior in the world at that time, out of former technical. Sharon Simpson out of Manchester High School. Ran the heats of the 4x1. But and I was their coach at that time. And I coached Nadine Palmer personally. When we looked at the team, we felt that Sharon Simpson would have contributed more. And she became a part of, a member of that 4x1 team, that one goal, and her life changed forever. And I refer to all these situations just to say to you, athletes, when you are given the opportunity, to grasp or uh, 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 make something of yourself, do not relinquish that, that, that situation. Sure. What transpired at the National Trials, I'm extremely happy for the performances, but I'm also sad internally. Because for, uh, for a coach, we view things differently. And placing fourth or placing outside the medals for me. If I was to put it in a different perspective, it is as if coming eighth, the difference is, 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 is minuscule. For the persons on the outside looking in, of course the performances were great. And of course, 20.23, 20.24 mm -hmm. by Rashid Dwyer in, in, in 2005 would have won the World Championship when John Capal won it 20.31. But these are different times. These are times where you have to step up your game, step up your performances. And whenever, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the opportunity is there for you to make use of it. Do not think and wonder if this is me. This is what you have been trained for. So if you are running 100 meters and you find that you are leading you see goal to 60 meters, don't look around and ask, is me here? No. You have been trained to do that. And all of these things are instinctive. So I want to say to you, the persons who are being given the opportunity to go to the World Championships and all these major games, this can be a platform for you. For the World, for the Collegiate Games, ESPN, one of the major sports providers will be carrying the media life. It says a lot. It means that 265 million people the, 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 the competition will be beamed in front of them. And you have about six shoe companies worth over $200 billion that will be there. Ladies and gentlemen, again I say, make use, grasp the opportunity that is presented to you. Thank you very much. Well said, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time,
we will be listening to our guest speaker, Mr. Orville, or Dr. Orville Taylor. And he is a, a gentleman who most of us would have known either having seen him here or having listened to him on the radio. And Dr. Taylor, you know, as he's, 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 he's always called, um, is an outspoken gentleman, somebody, someone who knows or tries to make to, to, um, to know as much as he wants to know, you know, right? And he puts himself in a position where he can also <coughs> educate others. At this moment, I'm going to ask that you put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, and in, as we invite Dr. Orwell Taylor to speak to us on this occasion. Put your hands together. Foster, 
Bearing in mind the little bit of resources they get, even though right now they're talking about the kind of resources that they're not cut back on, and they don't seem to have an understanding. You see, I mean, for the GC Foster, from, and from not 2001 chips, I mean, for the GC Foster, from in the 1990s. I knew about it in the 1980s. By then, I was already a student at the University of the West Indies. Yes, I am 52 years old this year. So, why the wrong year? <laughs> 20 years now, I'll buy chips, all right? Okay. And the other things, and there are certain drugs that are illegal. That's not legal, but mine. <laughs> I'm not it at all. <laughs> all right, seriously. And I'm a person who like to use history to instruct me. Because when you look at the past, you can instruct yourself as to how the future is going to go. And it's when I was doing some research for an article that hopefully is going to come out in the International Journal of Sport, International Review of the Sociology of Sport, um, later on in the year. I was realizing just how important a man like G.C. Foster was. And everybody jumping up and talking about how Jamaicans fast since you see it bold. But I am G.C. Foster. Decided. I don't, you all know about G.C. Foster, you know exactly who he was? Yes, yes, yes. Put a bit of a the husky stuff. Yes, yeah? When I talk to you, Professor, I'm not talking to you. I'm saying G.C. Foster was an awesome man. And I think, bearing in mind the kind of things that he was capable of doing, he clearly would have been Jamaica's first, um, not first, yeah, he would have been Jamaica's first sub 10 man. Yeah, easily. Because we wanted to compete at the Olympics, but of course Jamaica didn't have an Olympic association. Furthermore, Jamaica was not a country, um, we were a colony. And he, notwithstanding that, went and competed with, with, with the European champion, the British champion, the Irish champion, Americans, the finalists, etc. And beat them off like them named the regular ones. <laughs> uh, hush. Hush. That's why I like Chuck and me, you see. So G.C. Foster, for me, was an inspiration. But fast forward into the 1990s, G.C. Foster produced a brother named Roxburgh Martin. And Roxburgh Martin ran sub 45. And he more like he couldn't tire. Amazing fellow. American colleges suck him up for a little while and think, but Roxburgh Martin. Everybody know about Daddy McFarlane who learned, learned to hurdle in the last year of his activity. Because Daddy McFarlane really didn't hurdle. Like, we know that. Ultimately, when he started learning the techniques that to help him, Daddy McFarlane, G.C. Fosterman, ran sub 45. It is G.C. Foster that showed you take an MVP that they were capable of doing what they were doing. And I'm sick and tired of the hypocrites out there who jumping and talking about spending money in other places when the first place they were nine point, they were sub, sub 10 in this country is right on this up on the track. I was here. I saw it when everybody was there. Yeah, yeah. When I saw Asafa Paul run the sub 10, I said to myself, yeah, young man, what do it. This is where we're going to break the world record. And I, was, and I stood there totally amazed. And having had the opportunity to walk on the track a couple of times, I'm like, this is the track. And Mr. Shakes, don't make them tell you the foolishness. Whatever kind of money they want to spend, make sure the government spend money to fix up the track before they waste it to do anything else. And I, would, and I would embarrass them and talk about white elephants more and more because a priority has to be in the premier sport college in this country. This all must fix. Well, sir. Yeah. And I'm going to pause at this moment because I know uh, there are people who love to come and speech if I and speak at the athletes and speak at you without knowing anything about you. I was introduced, my name is Dr. Orville Taylor. I am a sociologist. I teach at the University of West Indies. I work on RGR 94 FM a little bit and I write a column in the cleaner. I'm a cyber last boy. I love to wear black. That's me. I'm going to ask you, you know, I'm, going to I'm going to ask you to indulge me because I want to know what is speaking. So I'm going to ask every single one here who has been selected to stand up and briefly tell me exactly who you are and what you're going to do. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's CXE 
feel like you want the bottles. <laughs> then the mind will test you. <laughs> but you're still you got jokes at the guy you said. I'm sorry for that. Yes, my friend. Well, I'm wearing one, bro. Shop with us. Okay. Former National Jewelry Record over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Intercollegiate champion 2013. Okay. And you're one person who really would want to box me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. And future gold medalist, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay.
having got to that part, let us continue. There are some things that uh, Mr. Winston said. I'm going to tell you one of the reasons why um, my relationship with GC Foster has not tightened. In 2005, I was at the national trial. No, I was not, it was a national trials. It might have been either Champs or um, the, C the Junior Trials or something, but, I, but there was a particular leg run by a homeward athlete. And when, I, and when that athlete ran that leg, I stood up in the stands, and my jaw reached all the way down to my pants waist, and I went up there, and I stood like this. And I said, Jesus Christ, I can't believe that God could run so fast. Like, amazing. That's what that, I said, really? So I took for, at the time I was going to write it for the cleaner, and I took up phone and look around and next day I got a call and I called him home and I said I'm going to give you Mr. Wilson's number and the friendship with Polo Wilson continued from then because I realized that he used to, for some strange reason, be my colors. And one of the things I discovered in my association with Maurice Wilson is that he had found a kind of formula that incorporated not simply training the athletes to run a track like horses and at the end of the day you need to put them out to pasture but it was an, a holistic kind of development that was interested in not simply their athletic prowess, which is an important part of it, but their totality of development. I came to discover also that some people think that's probably something to do too controlling and because it wasn't anybody and father and the boss, but notwithstanding that, I watched him and I watched athletes, and I have not seen any athlete who has stepped away from the guidelines and guidance of Maurice Wilson and automatically and very soon got any kind of improvement. On the contrary, I usually see the opposite. I'm saying it's not because Morris is my friend. I associate with Morris because of the quality of work that I see him putting in. And so I want to say this to you at least, that whatever you might want to think, you need to recognize who and what you have. You have GC Foster, but you have Morris Wilson, who is absolutely one of the best, if not the best coach in the country. I say this word in fear of contradiction because anytime Glenn Mills gets a 400 meter runner who is a very ordinary as a producer runner, as a, as a world class runner, then I'll be impressed. Or when he gets a very ordinary person from home out of the high school system, somebody who's running 10.8, and when he can take that 10.8 man and make him run some 10, then he can talk to him that he's a top coach. When he gets somebody who's running 48s in the 400 and make that person run 45s and run some 45, then Glenn Mills can talk to me. Glenn Mills gets the cream and then what he does with the cream, he turns it into ice cream and other products. Maurice gets a whole range of athletes, some of them more spectacular than others, but there are some of you who I've seen. I'm looking at Anastasia Leroy, for example. And Anna is a, is a hard worker. And Anna, people know, made me come to tears. Literally, I want to run down my face at the child. When I read her Facebook page and I put up a posting on it, I want to run down my eyes because I understood. I remember when I met my in 2006, um, and they had a little nickname for her. That's your son. I can't get You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right, good. And there were three of them. She was, there, were one, there were four of them. Um, Anna, Bobby Gay Wilkins, um, Sonita, and Lange, right? And there, were, and there were other kinds of issues going on there, and that's where the friendship with Maurice went on. And there are some things that, we've, that Maurice ended up doing that I probably had a word that had a bit to do with it, but um, that, that ultimately it worked out, I think, for good. And some of these, if you want to tell him, he'll tell you. Having seen it, I know that you're getting, if not the best, one of the best bits of coaching you can get anywhere in Jamaica and possibly in the world. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. I'm rewinding. There is a reason for the home of success. There is not a case where, yes, more memories are brought in by at least from there and here and there. That's, that happens. But bringing the athletes from one place and bringing them into a particular camp doesn't guarantee the success. The coaching methodology, the nutrition program, the other kind of support, that is where the success begins. I want to reiterate what was said earlier on. Chip said it, 
Mr. Sheikh said it, Willow is saying it, and I'm saying it again. And I'm using myself as an example. There's a reason why I can't set aside the last boy, and there's a reason why I said I, I, I came from Book Valley, and there's a reason. Because no matter how high I get, whenever I look up, I say my big brother, when I look up, I say my mother, when I look up, I say some of the people who have to do with my own foundation coming up. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Ungratefulness is one of the worst things that can happen to you. You think that you're rich. And when you think that you're rich, you say, all right, I'm going to get it now. I'm going to turn my back. There's a monkey. And when the monkey climbs up to the top of the tree, and can make it, when make it, it put, 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 turn the backside up to the air, and that's about a cook pan gun. <laughs> exactly. Anytime you think you reach so far that you can forget where you're coming from, you're on the path of destruction. Don't put your head so high that your feet can't follow. Remember, I said that. Don't forget. Right. So, and I know they just slipped a while ago when they say they didn't make the forgot to mention home, but it's, it's, it's important. Okay. All right. I don't know it's not a big day. It's just a Friday I slip because I know you're very grateful for what happened at home. And Chrisan, I also was following you from long before the touch of the track. Murray said to me, you have, you have a class team, you have a such name, some team, and I will tell you the name and I will say, Murray, I'm here to talk to you. He said, okay, I'll let you get this and that. You know, so, yeah. so, wait, we have to tell you something. Watch it. So, yeah. All right, I believe you. So I've been following you for the last how many, how many years? Yeah, from you when you said second form. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I expect greater things. I also want to say to you as we step forward, there's some bits of specific advice. Man like Rashid, I meant what I said when I called this up there. Keep your mind focused. Don't make anybody put any negatives in your mind. You are capable of far greater speeds and far greater speed endurance than you think. Keep your eyes focused, run your own race yourself. You're one of the best sprinters in this country. You don't know it yet. Mm -hmm. You hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Look at my man, you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, you believe me? Uh, you remember the day I saw you in the super center? You remember me, sir? You? you remember Boulevard Super Center? Oh, and I yeah. can't remember. You remember me now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? yeah, I remember. Okay. Remember, I told you that you were going to the National Trials on the way. You remember now? Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, was I right or was I right? Well, there's further to go. There are other things you must pay attention to. Chips made a point about being very careful about your, what goes into your body. Be also careful about what goes onto your body. There are some people, you know, and I, I don't say the body here because I think Anna is a natural drowning. And any of you who's uncomfortable with the skin complexion, leave it alone. Don't run. Because those steroids, no, we don't have anything to rub it up. Right? I might want to do it, but not in order to I'm already picking it. Do not, because you don't know the kind of impact it may have on your internal organs or your blood work. You can easily test positive because you lose a little thing for touch up. Do not be absolutely careful. Right? And the kind of person who bleaches already has certain kind of dose that are going to make you feel. Because if you bleach, it means you don't like yourself, you're not comfortable enough. It means that when they draw beside you, or you find that you're leading the person to come down the street, and you hear them there, and you say, Why? I really mean I lead this person, just like Maurice said to you. <laughs> if you're a bleacher, you're already losing. What, what you do. Be careful of the kind of alliances that you form. Yeah, man. Be careful. You have genesis, even within the Jamaican camp. And there are persons as straight as they may and I talk about slavery and plantation. There are persons who you think are supposed to be supporting you, who would be happy if you test positive. Know who you trust. And a matter of fact, be able to trust yourself. Because sometimes when you're there, you drink some milk and you pass, take this gas, you pass, and the side one come on. Trust yourself. And you just own the so much. Be careful who you trust. Am I making sense? Yes. All right. Guard your body. Believe in yourself. Take the opportunity as it comes. Yeah. yeah. You don't know when you're going to be injured or anything else. Mm -hmm. For those of you who are here um, and you're a student at least and you have more time to study, and those of you like Chris and who are just coming in, remember whatever it is that you want to do on the track or on the field, remember that you want to have a little piece of paper. Okay? That little piece of paper is important because there's always life after track and field. You hear me? 
Right. Never mind. You might never have to use it. But because who knows, you might make so much money in the two or three years that you are at the top that you might not need to go and work for anybody again after, but you might not. That's just part of the reality. You have an opportunity. Many of you would never, if it were not for your athletic ability, found your way in a university or in a college. G.C. Foster, I've seen this place. I, I sat on the board of the University Council of Jamaica um, about a decade ago. And I was there when the degree programs were coming up for certification, for accreditation. I was one of those persons. And so when, we, when I heard about the first degree being certified at G.C. Foster, it's gymnastics I could have done, because I came about nine people in. Yeah, and two bone flip. <laughs> I am extremely happy. Take advantage of the opportunity to get this little piece of paper and the tertiary level certification. Yeah? Finally, rewinding and, re and fast forwarding. I don't care who is in front of you or who's beside you. I don't care. I don't care who comes out the curve in front of you. I don't care who has thrown before you. It's you have the shot put in your hand. It's you have the baton. It's your legs on the track. Anytime self -doubt step steps in, you have already lost. You have come so far. You, are, you have come from a program which is underfunded, under supported, and under recognized. It is your opportunity right now to shine. I'm putting money down, I'm not a gambling man. I'm putting money down right now, beating my chest is where the truth comes to live and the lights come to die. That, in a month or so time, I'm going to beat my chest and say, let me tell you something. Me, they did a GC faster with them. And them, me they know them are mashed up. I don't even have to say it in, in, in English because I'm absolutely confident. And Chris, I'm talking to you specifically. I've been watching you over the years and I want you to look at me. I believe in you even more than you think that you believe in yourself. You have great capabilities. And Maurice and I speak about them, almost all of you. So I know your profile. Keep your eyes and your head right on the prize. Follow the man, but follow your heart, and you're going to be successful. I'm putting my money down. Don't let me lose it. Bless you.
What is up, Ryan? What's up, Ryan? What's up, Ryan? What's <laughs> Indeed, it has been a morning for an afternoon I spent, and I'm sure that you'll agree with me. But well, this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Everton Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm here for all the athletes and coaching staff that will be representing the country at the 2013 IWA World Championship, uh, World University Games, and CDC Games. Um, I'd like to express our deepest gratitude for our truly inspirational, educational, and motivational speech. Your words today did not fall on deaf ears, and I'm sure that your speech. And again, ladies and gentlemen, again, I want to thank you all for having taken the time out, as Mr. Clark has said, and I am Dr. Taylor, who has journeyed from Kingston. Protection as he journeys as he journeys back home or to his job. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I'm gonna hand over to <laughs> refreshment to sir. So Samuel will will direct the um proceedings. Yeah. Oh, I never sampled that kid. I didn't know I heard you before. <laughs> <laughs> 